supporting. I appreciate that too. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So, so welcome everybody. It's 10 a.m. on the uh, minute here. And so we want to introduce you guys to Dan Hillsman. Um, he is an, an awesome, awesome guy that I've gotten to know in the past year. I mean, we really met at one of the events and then um, talked more at the airport, actually, while, while we were waiting yeah. to, to get on board. And so Dan lives in Atlanta. Um, so Dan, how long, tell us a little bit about your background in real estate, how long you've been in real estate and sure. how your career started. Sure. So started in 1991. Didn't really do much with it the first several years. Worked at a adolescent treatment center, and then I um, started trying to get my buyers pre-approved and had a little trouble. So I decided just to become a loan officer. So a long time ago, you could just become a loan officer. That's right. Because uh, my thought was, well, certainly they could buy a house sooner or later. So then I was in the mortgage business for about 10, 11 years, more so. I did a little bit of real estate, but mostly focused on. Uh, being a loan officer and um, then, then went into real estate full-time after about 11 years. So been 14, I think, years for more so full-time real estate. So so 14 years in full-time real estate. And mm -hmm. what would you say your best year in real estate was as far as from a production standpoint? Uh, the year before I came to EXP Realty. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it was a little bit, uh, a little bit challenging to make that move. Wow, that's awesome. So what was your production year the year before you came to EXP as far as uh, 21. 21 mm -hmm. units. Okay, yep. awesome. And were you feeling, um, you know, burned out at the point like before you even knew about EXP? What was your feeling about your career where it was going? I know I've been yep. in business 20 years. I had lots of feelings. So what was your yep. feeling? I just started thinking, how does this end? So, you know, like, how, how do you know when you have enough money? How I've never been to a retirement, real estate agent retirement party. Right. And I thought, I guess you just do like everyone else and keep your license active and, you know, list properties as needed when you get much older. And, uh, and you know, I thought that's not a really a great plan. So, you know, trying to... Trying to start trying to sell more houses and save more money, and um, but you know that's fine. But you don't know what life's going to hold for you. So, really looking for more of an opportunity, perhaps to have an exit strategy for real estate, right? Which, in my opinion, was non-existent in traditional real estate, unless you decide to uh, to sell more homes and try to save more money, which is fine. But it's a little, you know, the more homes you sell, the more you have to put into your business. So there's a little math equation there as well. And then as the market shifts, that and you have to shift with that as far as, uh, you know, working that plan. So found the XP Realty and that's a little, we have a little bit better plan here. Yeah. So, so you were just kind of trudging along, looking, you know, selling your 21 homes a year, thinking, how does this ever end? There was no answer. None of us had an answer, right? So you just kind yeah. of did your thing. And then who was the first person to introduce EXP Realty to you? Like, how did you find it? Yes, yeah, so that's a great story. A great question. A little bit of a different story with myself in that, I was at a company quarterly meeting and I was, I'd been there five and a half years mm -hmm. and some things were going on in the company that I wasn't very happy with and which was kind of a surprise for me because I was ha super happy there for five years and all of a sudden uh, things were going on. I kind of looked into a few things and wasn't really thrilled with some of the direction of the company and some of the um, messaging from the company. So uh, quarterly meeting ends, good friend of mine walks up and says, Hey, what do you think? I said, I'm out of here. And he said, what are you, where are you going to go? And I said, I don't really know. And he said, well, you ought to call my friend at eXp Realty. Now, my friend that mentioned eXp was not at eXp. Well, at first he said, have you heard of eXp Realty? And I said, yeah, I don't think they're in Georgia, though. Right. Uh, no, they're in Georgia, but he, he recommended me to call a gentleman out in Arizona. And I called him, looked at, started doing due diligence on eXp, and did a lot of due diligence on eXp. I had 27 questions for the guy. Right. And, uh, luckily, he blew the last question. So he answered 26 questions. Uh, great. Last one was, how does my Commissions, Inc. lead generation website, which is exactly half of my business at that time. Um, well, I mean, it was one deal more than half of my business. Yeah. But how, yeah. does, how does that transfer over to EXP? Because I knew at the time we had Commissions, Inc. And he said, and I, in fairness to the gentleman, he's a super nice guy, but I probably wore him out. And he said, well, uh, my wife handles that. And I was kind of a pause waiting for I'll have her call you here's her number I'll get back to you and luckily he didn't answer the he didn't finish answering the question mm. so thanked him for his time hung up called my friend said thank you for the you know for getting me connected with the guy 
great guy. Give me some more information, but he's not my sponsor and you're not a DXP. So you won't be my sponsor either. Right. But go find my sponsor. So I didn't know Jay Kinder, but I knew who I was looking for. So I was looking for, a, I thought if I'm really going to make this move, I'm going to find the highest level person that I could find in the company. And hopefully they'll have the ability to help me through maybe some coaching or, um, you know, I was just looking for someone that, that the right person in the company didn't know who it was, did some research, found Jay, got him on the phone, talked to him a few times and decided to come over and tell you one big thing that got me with Jay was when he was talking about NAEA mm -hmm. he said, what we'll do is we'll funnel down NAEA to help you be a better agent. And I'm like, all right, here it comes, you know, I've yeah, been doing this a while. So I was already reaching to get my credit card. That's right. Swiping your credit card. And I was like, all right, you already really had my attention, but now you're not going to swipe a credit card. So how does, you know, how does that work? And he said, the model will allow us to be more successful if you can sell more homes. And then not only that, we'll take that information <clears throat> and let you funnel it down to the agents that you bring on also without swiping their credit card. And as soon as we finished that conversation, I knew that I was coming to XP and Jay would be my sponsor. That is awesome. That is awesome. And so I love that you had the wherewithal to just go, you know what, this doesn't feel right, this sponsor, you know, because a lot of people just pick the first person they talk to and they don't realize that it's sort of like a business decision. Um, so you kind of said, I'm going to go and find a great business partner. And of course, Jay is an awesome business partner and a businessman. And I love what the NAEA, and for those of you that are on this call, NAEA is the National Association of Expert Advisors. Jay Kinder um, started that company years ago with Michael Reese, and it's a coaching company. And so they have tons and tons of masterful trainings that are just free to us. So I've watched a ton of them. In fact, I train my people on some of the things that I still keep learning from them. So all of you need to um, contact Holly Kitchens and the Honey Badger group, get your login and get in there and learn that. So, all right, so now you're at EXP. Uh, this was what, two and a half years ago, Dan? Yep. So two Just and a half years ago, half. you're selling about 20 homes a year, right? You've been in the business 20 years. Um, so we can't, you're a good producer, but we can't call you a 100, 150 deal a year right. team leader, right? So right. you come to the Atlanta market with this new EXP, which nobody's even heard of. What right. was your mentality the first few months? Did you have commission breath where you were like, EXPing on everybody um, yeah. and telling everyone under the sun that this was the, the best thing or like, how was that first part of the journey? Yeah, I had, I had a lot of challenges because when I first saw the company, I was, um, I was a person that was, you know, walking around mumbling to myself, wondering if this could really work, being very hopeful and super right. excited about what I, the model that I saw. So um, yeah, the, good friends of mine that are with us now at EXP that I brought over at first they're like uh, no and talk, talk to me about that and I'm not I can't believe you're leaving and we're certainly not leaving and uh, you probably lost your mind because we're at a pretty good we're at a good company and we have a lot of good good things going on at this company so but you know what I knew the model well enough and I knew a few of my friend agents that were good producers well enough mm -hmm. to know that it was a good fit for them and I just totally believed that so it took probably three or four months to start having people come over because at first it was, you know, about a hundred no's. Right. And, um, you know, I asked one guy, I said, so he, the last company we were on, they were doing real well, but there was no cap. And, mm -hmm. but there were some good systems and some good training. And I said, so, you know, what's your number? Like how much are you going to pay that guy? And he said, what do you mean? I said, I don't know, $50,000 in, you know, in the, with your split. You want to double your business? You're going to pay them a hundred thousand dollars. I said, "There's got to be some number." So, what is your number? Is it two hundred thousand dollars you're going to pay the company on your split? And he's like, "Well, I hadn't really ever thought about it, but no." And I said, "Well, you know, we have a 16k cap." I asked his business partner. I said, "You want to get on?" <laughs> yeah, I didn't know anything. I said, "You want to get on the phone with Jay Kinder?" And he's like, "You know Jay Kinder?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And the other, his other partner didn't know Jay. So he's like, "How do you know Jay?" And I said, "I found him. Been talking to him." And he's like. Uh, well, I don't really, maybe sometime, but I don't really have anything to say to them right now. And so, you know, after really just talking to the agents that I thought it was a good fit for, uh, that made it a little bit easier. And then I talked to a lot of agents that were just agents that I didn't know if it was a good fit for. And they, uh, you know, got, I did have commission breath and they got tired of hearing from me. So, um, 
Were Denver. you calling them, Dan? Were you like picking up the phone and just calling yep. strangers at that point? Um, no, not strangers. Just, yeah. I, you know, I, I had a lot of, I've been in real estate for a while, so I had a lot of people that I did call. Everyone I knew in real estate, I did call and talk to them about it. Right. And, um, you know, some were more, what, maybe more receptive than others, but, um, you know, I was able to bring a, just a few key people over and then we got to kind of start working on this together. And um, that was real helpful because we could kick things around back and forth mm -hmm. for them to bring on some good agents. And that gave us a little bit of momentum <clears throat> in one of my groups, which I really focused on super heavy and I still do. But, you know, also now I'm focusing on other legs without a better way of putting it or groups. Yeah. Within my yeah. So your first, so your first year, you come into it, you meet Jay Kinder, thankfully, right? That's a great, that's a great meeting, and you start talking to everybody who, you know, has a heartbeat about EXP, and you're saying hundreds of people that first year, and how many agents actually said yes, I'm going to move my license over to EXP that first year? Do you remember? I think it was twelve. Twelve. Yeah, right okay. at twelve. Pretty so, close to twelve. So twelve agents your first year. Your mm -hmm. second year, you know, so about one a month. So your second year, how many agents said yes? Uh, I think that was closer to 18. 18 agents. Um, and then this year, you said you're at about 15 agents so far this for 2020. Yep. Okay. So 15 agents. So total organization right now for you is 34 frontline recruits, right? Frontline sure. agents that said yes sure. in mm -hmm. two and a half years. And of the 34, 15 are FLQA, and for those of you on the call, that means of the 34 people that Dan influenced to come into the company, 15 qualify um, for him to get paid on, what is it, four levels now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, four. So that means of his seven levels, he's got four qualifying levels because the agents are selling um, $5,000 in commissioned income in a six month period, or they have two transactions. So the goal for Dan is to get all 34 agents to qualify so he can open up his levels. So sure. do you actually have, you have 352 agents now on your team. Yep. Woohoo, that's exciting after two and a half years, right? Mm -hmm. So you have 352 agents. So those 34 people grew your brokerage in essence to 352. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have agents on your fifth and sixth level that you're not getting paid on? Oh, a lot. A lot. Does Painfully. that kill you every month? <laughs> Painfully. It's yeah, painful, painful, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so again, you know, what everybody on the call needs to know is, you know, Dan has grown a huge organization. And last month you told me your revenue share check was about $17,000. Yeah, this coming month, it's still kind of building. So, yeah. So could you, could, could you retire on $17,000 a month? Uh, yeah, just, but you know, it's, um, you got to make sure it's consistent. And then I did just have a big bump from, uh, agents that I brought on, uh, two and a half years ago or yeah. you know, two years ago and three months ago, we did bring on a handful of good agents on both my first and second level. Right. And so they tend to cap in about two or three months. So I think that was a little bit of an unrealistic bump. it will probably be, I think, hopefully 12 is more like the number, maybe 13, but I don't know. You'll see. Cause I'm also, we're bring on more agents. So, you know, it should balance out a little bit, but um, it was an unusually large bump this month and I'm pretty, pretty excited about, but. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's great. And, and again, you have 34 agents, 15 of the 34 qualify, which mm -hmm. opens up Dan's levels for those of you that are on the call. So he's again, getting paid on four levels, but he's leaving money on levels five and six right now because he's got a lot of agents there, but he needs to get the 34. He needs a few more of those agents um, actually get moving and, and do something. That's the glue that keeps us together. Is, and that's why I think, you know, when people say, oh, it's a recruiting company. No, it's not because Dan can't just bring people in and then get paid on all these people. You have to keep, you know, pouring into the groups and, and helping people grow, which helps the company be better. And that's what I do kind of love about it. I mean, of course, I'd rather take the easier route, like everyone bring a bunch of people, get paid, and nobody does anything. But that's not how it works, right? So, so I love when people say, oh, you guys are all recruiters. Well, yeah, we're recruiting to the company, but we're actually recruiters that care about the agent and the agent has to be successful. Therefore, it works versus a Keller Williams or a Remax. It's like, just bring them all in and you've got the spaghetti method, throw it against the wall. And if it sticks, it sticks. And each agent's doing two deals a year and it just doesn't work. Um, so tell me about, 
going from calling all these agents, getting discouraged, were you actually trying to get the agents in the beginning on the call with Jay, or were you just trying to close everybody yourself? Yeah, I was trying to close everyone myself in the very beginning. You know, maybe if I tell them about stock, it'll be great. Or maybe if I tell them about revenue share, or maybe if I don't tell them about revenue share, or right. maybe if I tell them about our training, or maybe if I tell them about NAEA. So um, it was maddening. You know, I, I didn't know what, what I decided to do after a little while was um, become a student of the game. It's a great way of putting it and focus on the process. So those two things are really big for me. A student of the game, focus on the process. Now the nose don't hurt nearly as much. And then meeting Gene Frederick and, um, I, do, I talked to Brent a few times, but meeting Gene and, and Rob and Key West. And then a big nugget there was, um, only talk about the agent's need. Yes. And so yes. If, when Gene mentioned that, if I'm only talking about their need, which I still struggle with, but I try to get back on track when I'm, when I get off in a conversation, but if I'm only talking about their need now, I don't have to, you know, have a blindfold on throwing darts, wondering if we're supposed to talk about revenue or stock. They tell me what I'm supposed to talk to them about. And if I listen and take some time, and another big nugget is I'm genuinely interested in them. So right. If I'm really interested in who they are and what they're what they're talking about, what their needs are, and then I can talk about them and what their needs are, that's all I really need to be talking about. So in Key West, that was um, probably about a year in, and my biggest takeaway: we went around the room. There's about 60 of us in a mastermind that Jay had, and they said, "So, you know, I asked everyone what their biggest takeaway was, and I said I don't have to talk about EXP nearly as much because yeah. I was talking about the entire model." to anyone that was on the phone that probably had their phone away from their ear, you know, for the hour that I was rambling on like a crazy guy. And then I did come back and was able to start learning how to talk about EXP less and talk about them a lot more. That, that is probably the one golden nugget that everyone on the call should listen to Dan say. He was a student of the game number one. And that's what I tell him every day. If you're not practicing your craft, whether it's selling homes, or you know, growing your organization, you have to study your craft. So you have to get to know the people at EXP. You gotta learn the stories, you gotta understand EXP, but you have to really focus on the agent. Just like when we go to a house, what do we tell our agents? Don't focus on you and why you're so great. Ask the seller, where are you moving? How soon do you need to be there? What are the stumbling blocks we're gonna run into? How can I best serve you? And I think we approach agents differently, right? We're, we're, we're EXPing all over them because the company's so great, but how does the company align with the agent? And so I'm trying to help my agent say, hey, Dan, God, you were such a great agent to work with on the other side of the transaction. How's your real estate year going? And if there's one thing you could change, what would that be? That's a great question to an agent. Get them talking about their business, right? Um, you know, uh, if you could, if you could add one thing to your business, or if you could snap your fingers and change one thing about your business, what would that be? And that's going to get me engaged with the agent in conversation. And then you can invite them to something. I think we forget that we can invite people to a, a training or a mastermind or, you know, you know, or saying, Hey, I'd love to mastermind with you. Love to take you to coffee and see how we could help each other in our business. It's building a relationship. And I think all of us were in it for the short game, not the long game, right? And so we want that immediate result, that agent to come over to eXp. And how long did your 34 agents, did they all sign up immediately or did you have to wrangle them in and keep, keep loving on them? Yeah, they're all wrangled in. I mean, a couple of them came over a little bit fast. I had one guy that came over and Rel he came over pretty fast and actually I said wait a minute we were like just starting the conversation he said all right I'll sign up I'm like wait 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 I've been doing this long enough no that's why why did you just say that I mean I'm not I knew the guy so I could talk to him a little bit more openly than yeah he was a friend of mine my past company so but I said wait why did you just say that and he said well um actually it happened twice he said well we were paying a lot of money at the other company for monthly fees. And he said, well, look, he kept pointing. We were at actually, you know, he's across the table from me. He kept pointing and saying, um, you know, it's the monthly fee because he was going to go from about, I think he was about $1,500 a month to 80 to, uh, back then it was 50 a month and it was 420 a year. But without getting too deep into that, it, you know, the company made a quick little change. And it's the same number. It's, it totaled $85 a month. 
So anyway, we said that. And then I had another guy that came over relatively fast. And, and also I said to him, I said, why did you just say you would, you know, that was way too fast. There's more information to give you. And he said, well, let me, let me ask you a couple of questions. He said, so there's one cap. I'm licensed in Texas and Georgia. So if I sell a house, either place, it goes toward the 16 K. Is that right? And I said, yep. And he said, so, and there's a monthly fee. At, I don't pay one in Texas, one in Georgia, right? And I said, no. And he said, so the only other cost is I'll have to pay for my MLS in Texas because he's more full-time in Georgia. And I said, right. And he said, all right, well, I'll come over. I'm on two different companies. I'm on two different caps. I'm on two different monthly costs. And that's, you know, great for me. So, but besides those two guys, you know, everyone else took between a couple months. And I had one guy, this is pretty neat. So I looked and he came over two years to the day that I had sent him the first video in Expert Mentors. Yeah, exactly. I mean, his onboarding day is the exact same day that Expert Mentors first video went out. So two years. So in that two years, you were probably just dripping on him, right? Sending him some fun yeah. information about the company or checking in yeah. with him, right? Yeah, he was a CE teacher. And so I would take his CE classes. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Uh, have a conversation with him and wait for him to ask me how things were going. And I was going, I have like 90 agents. I have like 120 agents. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my revenue was this and now it's this. And he's like, you gotta be kidding. So after, um, you know, continuously updating him on my, on my uh, progress. On your success. He couldn't, ta he couldn't take it anymore. That's right. Right. How, and that's what I always say. How many people, how many successful agents at EXP does one need to hear about interview to, to know that this is the best place to be. And for some people it takes them a year. And so I always tell my agents, guys, if you're going to be selling real estate for the next five years, which most of them on this call are going to be selling real estate for the next five sure. years, build your company in the interim, but don't be creepy. Don't, you know, don't, don't EXP all over people, you know, just really build a relationship. Eventually these people will trust you enough to go, you know what, Dan's a great guy. He's kept in touch with me. He's doing great. I think, you know, this guy's onto something and they will sign up under you. There's probably about five people out of the, the 40, you know, 46 people that I've brought over now that literally said yes right away. And one of them was Malin, you know, I don't know if she's on this call, but she was like, I'm ready to go. She had done her research. So there's going to be people out there that have, have looked at EXP for months and then you just happened to land on their feed or you just did a great inspiring video and they're just watching you and all of a sudden they're like, you know what, I'm going to reach out to Dan. And so, so now Dan, do you have do you, your schedule? So you wake up on Monday, Monday through Friday. You told me on, in our pre-interview, you said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell about 12 homes this year. And I listed 15 agents, right? So I, I brought 15 agents to the company. Maybe I should sell six next year. So is your goal to just be done selling real estate eventually? Um, maybe. It's kind of hard to do. So um, I've been doing it so long. It's somewhat in my blood. So like every now and then I catch myself going, uh, you know, I've got a few buyers to call. And then I look over my agent list. And then I hear Brent go over my head saying, you can sell that one house and get paid once, or you can help agents and get paid over and over as long as, you know, forever and ever and help them get agents who get agents. So, um, you know, a little bit of battle with the person here and one here saying, uh, you know, I don't, so I don't, I think one problem I, I had prior to EXP was I was having some coaching from a gentleman who hadn't sold a home in 15 years Got it. and he was pretty much spot on. And he was a super high level agent in Atlanta, but uh, every now and then I'm like, oh. I mean, every now, he would say things like, it, you don't know, you haven't been out there doing this while. That is not a great comment. So don't think I really want to be that guy. And I do enjoy working with buyers and sellers. So yeah, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell. Keeps your skills sharp. I mean, to, to sell one home a month, I mean, it's not yeah. daunting yeah. for us to do, right? I yeah. mean, it's, it's kind of fun and you don't want to retire completely. Um, right. So when you wake up on Monday, Monday through Friday now, do you have an actual schedule where you're so intentional to reach out to agents like how does that look now for you to build the organization well it's it's evolved from me doing it all myself to you know utilizing um because we are going to business so luckily i was aware early to take a portion of the revenue and put it into tools and systems and test things to be able to talk to more agents so it went from me making phone calls to using LinkedIn to generate some business, 
Well, actually, prior to LinkedIn, it was lunch and learns. So I would do a lunch and learn once a month. I had a gentleman in our group do a lunch and learn once a month. We did a mastermind meeting once a month. And then I started doing get money now trainings once a month. Mm -hmm. So we had about four things a month that I could physically invite people to. Cause I'm, it was, look, I, I, I told you, I'm not, I hadn't figured any of this out myself. Like none of it. The only, the only one thought that I had the whole time was to get with my agents and tell them to when they had a deal that closed to tell me who they closed with, give me one thing to compliment the agent on and I'll call them up and put them into the system. And that's only worked marginally well. A lot of the agents won't do it yet. So I'm going to keep working and find out who wants to show up and do that. And I think that would be a good strategy. But besides that, I, haven't, I don't have any original ideas. So it was Lunch and Learns. Um, the Get Money Now training came from Michael Reese and Woods Davis. So that's not an original idea. In the beginning, I just hit play when Woods Davis would do, um, he, he would do some training. It would be recorded. So I would hit play. The mastermind thought came from us going down to Key West. And seeing Jay Kinder do it, we came back. I don't really, my, James Massey and Ronald Moore were doing that for the most part, but I brought them to the company, so I participated and helped out a little bit. But I would bring people to that. So it went from, you know, phone calls to events and then a little bit of help lately on LinkedIn. And um, then there's different things you can do on LinkedIn to, to get messaging where they'll reply. And uh, if they reply yes to, you know, looking at a real estate opportunity, then I don't talk to anyone cold anymore. I mean, there's no one that I pick up the phone that doesn't know I'm going to, then I'll have at least some connection or lead in with. And you can get that. So if there's an agent out there that you want to talk to, you don't have a lead in, you know, you can go find one of their listings. Yes. And, yeah. So there's a way, if you think a little bit outside the box, there's always a way to connect with whomever you want to connect with. And in the beginning, you know, you probably know an agent or two. And if you don't, you're brand new. Then when you have your first deal, that agent goes on your list. And they probably won't be interested today, but they might be interested later. And one of the other big takeaways, the second time I went to Key West was, um, you know, Brian Carruthers was in the room and he talked to some agent that was a relatively new agent. And he said, could you, you know, attract the Michael Reese? And, and uh, I'm kind of guessing it. I don't recall exactly who he pointed out. Uh -huh. but they're like yeah and he's like no you couldn't and he said what I mean by that is you personally could never bring Michael Reese to EXP but you could call Jay Kinder and Jay Kinder could bring Michael Reese to EXP so there really are no limitations if you do it strategically so you know you could bring a relatively high agent or a very high agent over if you work the process and have the right people do that so even myself if I'm working on someone really high which I haven't got to yet but I'm aware that you know, I could get uh, Chris Bear involved. So he's head of Eastern Development 3XP. Yeah, yeah. So I could get Jay involved or Brent involved. So I, I would know enough to know not to do too much talking to an agent that would be selling hundreds of homes or had a big team or a, a franchise looking to get out, something like that. You know, I would just introduce them to other people and stay involved a little bit. Yeah, and I think that's that's key too, because if you are going to speak to a, a higher producer, I know I was approached four years ago, and everybody that approached me was, you know, they might have sold five, ten homes a year, and I just wasn't listening. I didn't have my listening ears on, because I was thinking, right. what do they know about companies? You know, they, they're not selling homes at a high level, but it doesn't mean if they would have approached me and said, hey, I can connect you with Jay Kinder, and he really right. wants to, to chat with you about growing your business, my listening ears would have perked up because as a, as a higher producer, usually we're tapped into other higher producers around the country. I know I know I knew most of them in, in different groups. So that would have piqued my interest because I always laugh at, at the people in our area. I always tease them. and I go, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you call me? <laughs> and I'll go, well, we didn't think that we could. I would have listened had I been approached differently, but it was more, this company's amazing. It's great. And I just thought they wanted to recruit me. Um, but when you think about recruiting an agent, you're not making that much money per agent. You know, it might average out to eight or nine hundred dollars an agent per year. So it doesn't change my life to bring an agent on. But what I tell them all the time, it will change their life if they understand to do what Dan did, become intentional and build an organization within three years. This is life changing to, to just be intentional, love on people, show them a better way. At EXP, we have a menu of five, five pillars. You guys have heard me say it a million times. We've got 
leads, training, rev share, stock, and healthcare. Those are our five pillars. So if you guys understand that we have a menu that not other, no other agencies have, then we can add pillars to agents' business, but we just need to know what they need at that moment. They're, you should never be talking about EXP the minute you meet someone because that's exactly what others are telling people that all we wanna do is recruit them. So if you almost keep it very tight to the vest and make them want more, right? Leave them wanting more, sprinkle on them, invite them to something, and then do really positive social media posts, people will be attracted to that. Um, so have you gotten into any social media or anything like that, Dan? With no. your beautiful face? <laughs> very little, very little. <laughs> okay, so you're not even into that because we have a lot of young millennials on the call that yep. eat social media up for dinner. I mean, they're so good at it. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're training them that way to kind of do what GoGo does, which you know yeah. GoGo, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I would like to do that, but yeah, not yet, but maybe someday. Okay. I played around with it a little bit, and it's, I have one on, one strategy on my list, just haven't quite got there yet. Um, hey, I have a quick thought, though, when we're talking about recruiting. So yes, I, 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 I tell agents that I'm speaking with, if they'll say, well, someone's already talked to me, or I... Oh, did we lose him? I think I think we lost. Him. Let's see if he comes back. Dan, we're losing you. I, I like to do a little. Oops. Oh, we we yeah. lost you for a second. So go back to to when you said um, when I'm talking to agents because we lost you. You froze. Okay. okay. So um, yeah, there we go. Okay. So uh, I like to do a little house cleaning for the company, and I tell them the reason I'm talking to them is we're an agent-owned company. We build the agent one conversation. I mean, we build the company one conversation at a time. There is no company recruiter. And that's why you don't see billboards, TV, radio, um, advertisement about EXP because it's a, a one agent conversation back and forth. And uh, that's why other agents have talked to you about EXP. That why it might be, that why maybe it seems like all agents at EXP are just trying to recruit you. So, you know, so it's a little bit by design. And then um, but I'll be glad to, you know, take some time and show you the opportunity if you like to. So I try to just let them know why that why everyone or why a lot of people from exp have talked to them about the company mm -hmm. we'll house cleaning for the company that way i agree i agree and so in the two and a half years that you've been here i mean um how how are you enjoying your stock because you probably what was the stock right. when you joined six yes yeah, so i was getting at 100 shares when someone would come on and then i had well, when they would come on and have a closing and then it went to 50 and I had probably four agents that had closings put off. So, um, you know, I got some 50, 50 shares instead of a hundred, but uh -huh. yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, not never bone stock, not a stock guy. So really? uh, yeah, so I've never, never, never had stock. So a couple thousand shares and, uh, you know, it's kind of neat. A thousand shares of stock now in two and a half years. Uh, 2000. A little bit 2, over 2000. Well, that's great. I mean, 2,000 shares of stock and what? It's like 55 bucks or something. I mean, that's like $110,000 for you just sitting in a bank account for fun. Yeah, yeah that's kind of cool. That's kind of fun. Well, great. I want to open it up to um, everybody, you know, who has questions for Dan. Sure. Because I think, you know, unmute your mic if you want to ask a question or put it in the chat box, because I think this is such a great opportunity. Like I said, Dan's not a social media guru. He's not out right. there you know, putting posts, uh, like clickbait posts, which we're not even allowed to do, right? We're not allowed right. to really advertise for EXP. So he has literally grown it through being patient, um, mm -hmm. through meeting agents. You've probably got 34 agents, but how many no's would you guess that you mm -hmm. got to get the 34 agents? Well, are we counting the same no from, you know, over and over again from the same person? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, Mm, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I mean, I, I was on a call once with John Kitchens interviewing me, and I said, if you're on this call and I have more agents than you, it's simply because I had more no's than you've had. That's exactly and, right. And no's not really a no for the most part. I mean, I've only had maybe two no's that I thought, well, that's a pretty hard no. And one of them, the gentleman was 72. He said, sounds great. I got two years left. But the same company, 30 years, I'm not, not moving. I'm like, that's a pretty good no. I actually, you know, I believed it was a no. So that's all that really mattered. That's so you know, no is not really an, usually a no. Timing's the, like life. You know, timing's a big part of this. And then, um, 
you know, right place, right time helps a little bit sometimes. But yeah, I've had hundreds and hundreds of no's. And, um, you know, I had one yesterday that was kind of broke my heart. I've known this lady a long time. And, you know, I kind of go back to it must just not be meant to be. It's not the right time for her. But I've known her a while. And, um, you know, she told me about, wow, I just brought on this amazing part, real estate partner. And we're going to build a team at this company. And we're almost at 100%. You know, I'm like, oh, my gosh, really? You know, so, um, you know, and I don't, I don't pretend to know if that's the best bet for her or not or best plan, but, you know, maybe she does have the ladder linked up against the wrong building would be my guess. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I'm not sure why she thinks she knows the model, um, doesn't know the model, and thinks it's a better idea to stay at a mostly transaction-only company and try to build a traditional real estate team. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. To her, hey, we wish, wish you the best of luck. You know, you guys go over there and kill it, you and your new partner, and hope you, you know, start building that team. And and when you get to that place, you know, maybe I'll check back in early, middle of next year and see how it's going. And then, you know, maybe someday it'll be a fit and you can come over and I'll help you. Like I've helped three agents. You know, I just had my first three agents last month have $10,000 a month passive income. And I could have never built much of a team bigger than the four or nine agents. I was broker in charge once had nine agents and had a team that had four agents in, you know, Metro Atlanta. So I was trying to plant a little, I'm a seed planter. So I was planting a little bit of seeds. Yeah. Maybe someday there would be a better way for you. Well, and that's it. And I think that's also a good approach. Hey, this may not be a fit for you now, but I want you to understand why 2000 agents a month are flocking to the company. It's something that, has never been seen in the history of our nation. And that's a, and that's a little line I, I learned in the cloud. There was some class and some guy said that, and I love that. He said, it's never been done in the history of our nation to have a company add 2000 agents a month. Why? And, and as long as you know the why, then if you ever are looking, I want you to give me the opportunity to you know, explain to you why. And that's it. So you leave the door open. Once you introduce, I think, the agent to the concept, then they're going to start watching you because you've introduced them to the concept. They're going to start watching what your organization is doing. And we're blessed to have, you know, Pam and such, you know, Marty and such great leaders in our group that are doing constant, you know, trainings and events. And, and it's your job, agents on this call, to, again, figure out who are you talking to? What is their need? Is it growth? Is it that they're brand new and they just want to learn how to build a duplicatable business? Is it that they're two years in the business and they want to go from 10 deals to 20 years? Is it that they're a team leader with one agent, but they really want to grow a team? Or is it that they're like Dan, 20, 25, 30 years in the business, and he wants to just you know, figure out the exit strategy? We all have something different on our plate. And so if you start you know, going at an agent with rev share, rev share, rev share, and they're like, dude, I just want to sell a home this year. Mm -hmm. you know, they don't care about revenue share at this moment. They care about learning. So then you need to know about the NAEA um, and the great programs. Charity was asking, there's a couple questions in the chat box. And again, guys, ask your questions to Dan because um, you know, he's given us his time here. So I want you guys to just don't be shy. Um, Charity asked, um, what's the Get Money Now program? And you know, is it something that they could take and use to, to bring agents on maybe to learn about? Yeah, so I got that from um, being part of a little bit of a I don't know if it's really coaching so much as a strategy or a system with Michael Reese and Woods Davis. Mm -hmm. um, it was some training that I had from them. They were teaching their agents. And, you know, some of it's things we already have. It's um, uh, like trying to cope it. It was open house system. So it's okay. not just you know, having a house, the whole system. And um, so I would take that training and uh, pick out the parts that were the best for about 20 minutes. And they were, you know, like start at four minutes and 12 seconds and stop at 18 minutes and two seconds and then talk for a little while and then start at, you know, 22 minutes. So it was training I did from them, but it's um, uh, just some training that they had about uh, different strategies in real estate. So it was prior to COVID. I'll probably start that back up here soon. Yeah. But just training that I got from someone else. So. Well, and there's, there's a lot of great groups. Charity actually is involved with the commitment to capping group um, that okay. Sam Kyle yeah. does, right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And so again, if you bring another agent from another company value and you say, hey, I'm in this commitment to capping group and it's amazing. It's changed my life. Or I'm in this accountability group. It's a weekly accountability. I know Pam does 
some weekly accountabilities with Kevin, my husband. So again, mm -hmm. it's just getting agents tapped into what they need. The next question is, you know, how do you approach the need in the other agent from Maria? And I think Maria, you're probably asking, you know, again, what we kind of touched on, which is, you know, what does that agent need help with? I mean, how do you kind of approach the conversation now? How do you, you just met me, Dan. So let's say we're, you know, maybe you've known me for a, a minute, a hot minute. How would you approach me for the conversation for EXP? Would you wait for me to bring it up or would you bring it up? Oh, and he's stuck again. <laughs> again. There you are. There you are. You're back. Uh, you're back. Did okay, you? Hear so, um, and I've evolved. I've, oh, gosh, let's see. Uh, and not I sure can, what to do. <laughs> no, I can hear you. You're actually good. You can keep talking if you can hear okay, me. Okay, good. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's evolved quite a bit. So, what what I've done with that is I really have basically thrown a lot of the. Oops. Oops, we lost him again. We lost you, Dan. Let's see if we can get him back. So we'll wait for Dan to come back. Holly, you said, um, what do you think would be the best strategy to reach out to new agents? Um, can they attend my uplines in person and virtual trainings and online groups? Um, EXP World, Guest Pass, Share Out personal career website, discuss their local mentor program, et cetera. So um, Dan's still frozen. So I'll answer Holly's question. I think it's very important for you guys to invite people in, um, invite agents into the culture, you know, get them around Marty Hampton and Sharon and Renee and um, all of these agents that are putting on trainings. Um, I think so many of you are here because you joined one of our trainings and you decided that you know this was a good fit for you you wanted to be immersed in the culture so so yes i think holly i would invite them to anything you could invite them with i w i probably wouldn't give people guest passes um in the first meeting I, you know or just hey here's a guest pass a they're not going to get it they might feel it's creepy there's a lot to kind of understand in exp world um so i think i probably wouldn't give them a pass right away dan's back hey dan that's good. Sorry, not sure what's going on there. Um, oh, so okay. we're at, um, yeah, so I try to just, I've thrown a little, a lot of the scripting out the window and I just try to approach it like a human being to human being for lack of a better word and see how you're doing and then see how your business is and see how you like your broker. Uh, one little tip I learned from a gentleman that was um, from Broker Generator as a service I had a while back that did some email messaging out to help me build an agent list was he told me, he said, um, and it worked out really well. And I'm not super intentional like this, so it was a little bit strange for me. And I was on my way to meet an agent that I did not know. And he said, all right, here's what I want you to do. He said, when you get there, after you talk to her and everything, you know, get a little, both of you are pretty comfortable. I want you to look at her and I want you to say, what do you love about your broker? And then he, oh, what do you love about your brokerage? And he said, love is a human protected emotion. They won't lie to you about that. And he said, I want you to say love, and I want you to you know, love about your broker. Now, so it worked out textbook. I mean, we were probably 20 minutes in the conversation, and I thought, oh, yeah, ask her. So um, kind of paused, and I looked at her, and he said, watch her body language. So I asked her, and she kind of shifted around her chair and kind of tightened up and crossed her arms, and she goes, exactly. I've been asking myself that same question the last three or four months. What do I love about my broker? Not really very much. You know, not a lot. They really don't do anything for me. Yeah. And so yeah. I was like, wow, that kind of blew my mind that he was so on target with that. So, you know, then I asked her, what did she love about her brokerage? And she didn't love too much about her brokerage either. Matter of fact, she was going to leave and probably start her own company. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of neat. And I think that the first human nature is like, if somebody came to me and said, well, how do you love your brokerage? I love my brokerage. I love my people. And the way that I think of it is imagine you're a young child in elementary school and you grew up with these, you know, your classroom mates of, you know, these 24 kids. And all of a sudden you have to go to a new school and you're walking into a new classroom. You don't know anybody. And that's kind of how it feels with realtors, right? We all have this little community, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, they're just comfortable. People are creatures of comfort and they don't like change. So when an, an agent could be sitting there every single day, knowing they're unhappy, knowing they want to do more in their business, but at the end of the day, changing companies sounds overwhelming. It's overwhelming. 
So mm -hmm. I think, again, it's, it's really building the relationship, Holly, with that agent and kind of, I, I always go back to the five pillars, you know, leads, training, rev, share, stock, and healthcare. Could one of these pillars help that agent? But I can't know until I know the agent's problem. Just like on a seller and a buyer, I can't fix their problem unless I know the one thing in a deal, which is the motivation of the seller or the buyer. Once we know their motivation, now we can start to think, how could I really truly help this person and so if you come from a place of I want to help versus I want to recruit and, you know, have commission breath, I think that it's a slam dunk. It's a slam dunk if you're really trying to help that person. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's my feeling. But I definitely, Holly was asking, do you give people passes to the world? I don't know what your opinion is. My opinion is it's a little overwhelming if they haven't really mm -hmm. learned about EXP and it might almost turn them off. Yep, I agree. I have a couple times, but they were far enough along the line. Uh, I give one gentleman, he's coming after Thanksgiving, or right before Thanksgiving. Right. And so he's, you know, you never know till they're here, but um, so 90 some percent sure he's coming. So he got in the world, took some classes, and he liked it a lot. So I think I've done that three times, maybe sparingly. If you do that, you might want to go in with them and walk around the first few times. Yes. Um, but back to something you said a minute ago. So I have told one agent once, and uh, touched on it a few times with some other agents. Um, look, I've enjoyed talking to you. The reason I keep following up with you is I think this might be a good opportunity for you. And I'm really not trying to, I'm not going to make very much money if you come. I'm not, that's not the reason that, if that was my goal and plan, I would go talk to, and I told her, I said, how many homes did you sell last year? And she told me, and I said, look, I th I've enjoyed talking to you. I think you have a lot of potential. I think you might be a good fit. Mm -hmm. If it was all about money, I wouldn't be, and I took a little bit of chance. I said, I wouldn't be talking to you. You're not very, you're not a, much of a producing agent. I think this company can actually help you a lot. Right. My time might be better spent talking to somebody doing $10 million instead of the production she was doing. So yeah. it was kind of a last ditch, ditch effort to let her know that, hey, this is about you. It's not about me. Right. I mean, if, if it was about me, I probably wouldn't be talking to you. But I see something yeah, yeah. in you that I think would be of help. Well, and her husband was on the call, on the speaker, and then she goes, okay, I'll sign up. And, but it really wasn't for me to get her to hurry up and sign up. It was to just kind of draw the line in the sand and let her know that, hey, you know, this is a, I'm trying to be helpful to you. Um, if it was some, some brilliant plan for me to make a lot of money, I wouldn't be talking to you. Well, and it's a classic takeaway. And, and we've also used it. Now, you have to know your audience, and I think you have to deliver that, or else you kind of sound, you know, like, oh, he just doesn't care. But you're right. It's like... You know, if I'm talking to Dan, it's like, Dan, let's be real. You know, the most I can make off of you, if you actually cap and sell 20 homes, is $2,800. Do you honestly believe, Dan, that $2,800 is going to change my life per year? I mean, think about it. Per year, $2,800. It's not going to make a dent in my wealth, but what will make a dent is if you and I partner and I can show you how to sell more homes or whatever they need. I can show you how to cut your expense. I can show you how to build a team. If I can show you or put you in front of the right people that will help you build your whatever, whatever their motivation is, remember guys, whoever you're talking to, if I can get you in touch with the right people that will help you do blah, 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 now that's gonna be valuable. That changes my life because I've just helped you change yours. And then if you get really successful, and you help change the lives of 10 agents, and those 10 agents help change the life of another 10. Now you and I, Dan, we've just changed the lives of 100 people. Now that is worth it. But one person, it's not gonna do it for us. So I wanna partner with you, Dan. I want you to be my partner, and I know that I can help you. I think that's just a much better feeling conversation than EXP is great, you gotta come here, you're gonna get the stock, you're gonna get your crap back, you're gonna, you know, it's like, uh, it just doesn't yeah. feel as good. Right, 100%. Yeah, so does anybody else have any more questions um, for us while we've got Dan, because we've got like five more minutes. Um, so either unmute yourself or, or put it in the chat box. Um, I think the biggest takeaway is of what Dan, Dan said is that you have to be a student of the game and figure out what agents need and focus on the process. And I think that, you know, all of these agents on this call, they're all my partners. I'm happy to speak to anybody for you so you guys can start hearing what the conversations sound like 
um, and then sure. you know help you land more people. Go ahead, um, Charity, you're unmuted. Hey, okay. Um, so I'm here actually with one of my recruits. We're getting a house ready for sale that we're listening together. So we're all, we're both listening together <laughs> as we take apart beds. Um, so question is, um, the actual process, let's say someone, because of the traction, a lot of times what we're getting and he's already gotten is people reaching out to him because he just made the switch and saying, Hey, what is this thing about? So what's the first, like, what is this, like the one, two, three, does he have the conversation first or is it a phone call? Is it a meeting? I mean, obviously we're in Corona and then like, at what point do we know it's time to put them on the EXP explain call and then get them to talk to you or whoever? So I think we just want to know our strategy so we can be most effective. And then by the time they're talking to you, um, you know, they're well informed and it's just a short conversation that like kind of closes the deal or do you, I mean, I, I don't know what you prefer. So could you, cause that's yeah. what we're focusing on. Yeah. So yeah. I would, I would say for us, for our organization, you know, cause obviously you're not going to be calling and bugging Dan unless Dan yeah. wants that, but you know, he can. He can. <laughs> <laughs> bug me, bug me. What I would say charity to that is if somebody comes at you and says, Hey, you just switched to EXP. It's unless they're asking why did you do it or you know what do you think. It's sort of like when somebody comes to you and says, "Hey, Charity, how's the market?" and you say, "Great," and that's it. I would never approach that conversation that way. How's the market? Well, it depends. Are you looking to buy, sell, or invest? Now they're thinking about something. So if somebody says, "Hey, how do you like EXP?" it's like, well, it depends. You know, everybody comes for different reasons. How's your, how's your business right now? What are you looking to do? Grow, you know, grow a team, sell more homes. Like how's your business? I would literally turn the conversation back onto the agent and dig in more and ask the agent a question about them. People love to talk about themselves and their business. And so if anybody came to me and said, Hey, how's the XP going? It's great. But more importantly, how's your business doing? And is there one thing you could change? And if you could snap your fingers and change one thing in your business this year, Bob, what would that be? I would literally turn the conversation away from EXP and onto them and how you can help. And if that agent says, you know what, man, I just, this is, I'm struggling. It's been six months. I've sold one home, blah, blah, blah. Hey, Bob, if I could put you on a call with a top producing agent that literally has a team that sells 400 homes and she personally sold 130 herself, do you think that that would be helpful to you to kind of hear her story and maybe, you know, maybe she could become kind of a mentor for you. Do you think that would help you grow your business? If that person says, yes, hey, every Tuesday at three o'clock, we kind of have a, a coaching call and a wealth building meeting. Um, we do talk a little bit about EXP, but we more mainly talk about what EXP can deliver to you. So maybe it's a fit for you, but would you want to come to that call? I might be able to send you a link. That's it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a turn it around back on them, ask them questions about their business, the minute they tell you what it is, you've got to figure out how you can plug them in um, and then get them trusting you. So Charity, you might, if somebody says, God, I'd love to learn how to prospect and do cold calls. Instead of talking about EXP, I'd go, man, we are in this great commitment to capping group. Let me see if I can get you into that group and teach you what we're doing. Don't even talk about EXP. Get them in the group, build their trust. Now they're in the group. Hey, Bob, how do you like the commitment to capping group? Oh my God, this is awesome. Is this what you guys do at eXp? Is that the value that this company brings? Yeah, well, if you're interested in learning how to partner with us, because this is what we do, because we're badasses, then you can, you can you know, come to this eXp explain. But build, have two or three dates before you start eXping all over them. <laughs> I love it, thank you. Yep, that's great. Yeah. Um, what about the agents that tell you their current brokerage is home? I mean, that is their home, but I mean, have they ever moved houses? I mean, I have a home now, but it's always for sale, right? So <laughs> always yeah. for the right price. My home is always for sale. So um, I, I would probably dig more if somebody said, Maria, this is home. Well, what does that mean to you? And then I would probably turn it around and, and you know, ask them more questions about their business. You know. Forget the, the brokerage. I think we focus on the brokerage so much and we don't dig a little bit deeper past the brokerage. To me, the brokerage answer, I love my broker, is the, the window shopping kind of, hey, are you, you know, can I help you? You know, when you're dress shopping. No, I'm good. But the minute you need help, nobody's there to help you. 
So I think that's the, the standard no is I'm happy. I love my broker. I love my brokerage. Okay. Well, let's talk about your business. So I would always dig in on the business. You've got to find the pain points and then honestly see if you can fix them. If you can't fix a pain point for an agent, then EXP is not for them. I mean, that's just the reality. It's not going to be for everyone. What's your opinion, Dan? Yeah, I like that too. Uh, I tell him I loved my broker too, love my brokerage too. And then if you can go back to them and see what their goal is and see if their brokers, how's, how's your broker helping you with that goal? I yeah. mean, how do you XP if, um, you know, if my goal, I didn't, you know, learn a lot from Jay. So what I've learned from Jay is, is if I would have talked to Jay four years ago and it wasn't about EXP, he would have said, is that really the goal? Right. You know, so you save more money. He said, is that really the goal? Just, you know, because I didn't, you know, is it really the goal to sell 40 homes? I'm going, probably not really the goal to sell, double my production. Maybe double my income, but probably not double my production. Right. So then, you know, if we drill down into that, maybe it's a higher price point. Maybe it was to, you know, have an assistant. And so my, my first answer would not have been the correct answer. So if you can turn it back on them about maybe seeing if you could be, how you could help them and see what their goal is. And the truth is some of the agents won't know what their goal is or won't know what they really want. So if you kind of touch on that a little bit, and then like I said, I'm a big seed planner. So, you know, thank goodness I moved to EXP. Now I have you know, $110,000 in stock. You know, I wish I had $110,000 of stock every last two and a half years that I've been in the business. You know, we probably yeah. have this conversation because that would be millions of dollars in stock. And that's a perfect, you know, segue to, you know, when you are talking about the company, I think, you know, yeah, uh, the other day, Ashley on my team actually posted a picture of her stock in her story. She was like, look at this stock. I've been with EXP for 16 months. It was like $15,000. She said, what do you guys think I should do with it? Pay off my, um, her son's college, um, buy new countertops, buy a new car. And so she got people engaging, but she actually had one agent that reached out to her and said, Hey, I'm on a team and I'm not getting stock. And is that stuff real? And so she engaged the audience because it's not call me now to find out why I'm getting stock. It was like engaging them, telling them how happy she was that she was getting this stock. You never want to end an inspirational quote or a post with call me to find out more. I just think that's creepy. It's like you're selling something. Nobody wants to be sold to, they wanna be inspired. So I think that's my way of kind of inspiring people. Charity does a really good job of, you know, how proud she is of things that she's accomplished and people will, you know, watch her and watch her and watch her. And the minute they have a pain point, they're gonna remember Charity and Charity's at EXP and they're gonna call her. Um, the one thing I'll say the last couple of minutes, everybody remember the two words, what's next what's next for you that is that applies to a top agent that applies to a new agent so what's next to a new agent is i just want to learn to sell homes okay well are you um opposed to getting on the phones and making cold calls no all right well we have this great group boo 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 are you opposed to you know marketing with flyers or whatever no okay well we have this great information packet let me send it to you an agent that's doing 20 deals God, I'm exhausted. I really want a team or I really need an assistant. You know, it's always what's next for the agent. And then what's next after that? If you know what they, their vision is of their next five years, you're definitely going to be able to say, gosh, I was just like you, or I'm striving to be just like you. But my, my mentor, she actually sold 130 homes. So if I could get 10 minutes of her time, you know, she might do a coaching call with you. Would that help? Would that be helpful? They're going to say yes. And then we kind of build that relationship. We're not forcing EXP on them. We're truly coming from a place of, I want to help. And I think yep. that's, that's the key uh, for all of us, right? Um, because I was sort of like Dan in the beginning, I was like, man, EXP is so great and EXP is doing this. And they don't really care until they know that you care. And that's, that's how we'll end the call today. Um, Dan, you're awesome. I'm so proud that, that in two and a half years, you know, with zero capital risk, you've built a brokerage of 352 agents. Yeah, I'm grateful. I have one final thought for you. So yes, please. What's this, your it, if you'll approach it from a place of love, coming to the agents from a place of love and that you have a gift. So you really do have a gift that you can present to the right agent. Now, some people will open the gift. Some people will throw the gift away. Some people open the gift and look totally into it and take full advantage of it. But in my opinion, it truly is a gift. Yes. And if you'll 
come from love and think that you have something to offer these agents, that's a big, big deal. But, and then if you can buy into that yourself, because it is a gift that you have for some agents. Like I can give you a list of agents that have changed their lives. Yeah. I can also give you a list of agent of uh, buyers and sellers that I've helped them get to where they wanted to live. But a couple of the agent calls that told me how grateful they are that I stuck with them. I didn't give off on them. I didn't push them too hard, but I continue to follow up. And now they're having significant revenue share and they're helping other agents to build businesses. That call is I'll hire a more grateful call than any call that I've had from a buyer or seller. So you have a gift, think of it that way, and try to find the person that is a good fit for that gift and the person that will take the gift and take advantage of it. You don't always know, so I present the gift daily, but I'm all, all, also always excited to see who's going to you know, take the gift and open it up and run with it. That, that's, a, that's beautiful, and that's exactly it. I can't imagine... Uh, my life 16 months ago without EXP, what I would have been missing out on. I mean, all these people on the call, I didn't know them, right? We didn't know each other. I didn't know you. So, um, so I think it's just fun that we're changing lives at EXP Realty. We've got a gift, but don't be creepy. Help the agent come from a place of love. You know, you're the teacher, you know, you're just trying to help people just like you got into the business of real estate, trying to help buyers and sellers. Yes, we want to make money, but we also want to help them first. And if you give people what they want, you will get what you want. So Dan, you. you're awesome. I'll see you in Orlando in November. In Orlando. And awesome. uh, thanks guys for joining us on the call and go out Thank there you. and sell some homes. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye guys. Dan.